in our environment. Reference Ashinas is the Group Executive Corporate Affairs at AXA. It's a state-owned entity. You won't believe it, all right? And we wonder, in a good way, what is it that makes airport companies South Africa work year after year after year they deliver results and uh, to a large extent not embroiled in controversy. Well, she's here to talk about the annual results and I'm sure she's not so keen for me to go the leadership governance direction and start painting them with the same brush as other state-owned enterprises are. But reference uh, Shina's pleasure that you could come and pay us a visit. Thank you, Tim. I asked you about your CEO and, and how he's doing and you just told me the good news about him. Tell me more. Yes, I think uh, uh, these are the kind of news that we need to hear as a country in, the, in this current environment. Mm. Um, he has just come back from the Airports Council International Conference in Mauritius, where he was elected as the president of the organization. So uh, henceforth, he will be the presiding president of Airports Council International. Will you tell him that we want him here at the earliest possible opportunity? I shall do so. Please. And, well, not just tell him, but make it your business to bring him <laughs> To bring here. him here. Will I, you do that? I certainly shall. Okay. Well, I want to compliment him. And, of course, you guys have been working together for some time now as, as a collective uh, team, the leadership of the AXA group. And you operate around nine South African airports, right? And the profits improved over last year. Tell me your story. What happened this year? Um, we had a very good year. In fact, um, uh, the uh, fi- our 2017 financial year was our most profitable year historically. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that happened despite a sluggish economy. Uh, and also, um, we were issued a new permission. Uh, however, our profitability can be contributed to strong international passenger numbers. We've seen an increase in passenger numbers for Cape Town International Airport and King Shaka International Airport. And our, our financial profile continues to be strong despite being downgraded. So you will know that uh, as a state-owned company, our credit profile is linked to that of the sovereign. Mm. Uh, so when the country was downgraded, uh, we were also impacted despite our performance. Mm. Uh, but then um, that hasn't affected our, pro- uh, our profile. And we achieved 76 percent of our KPIs uh, as a group. Uh, We received an unqualified audit opinion from the Auditor General of South Africa. Um, And also we had a preferential procurement value of 2.8 billion, which talks to our transformation mandate and our transformation imperatives and making sure that we bring in new players into into our space. Now let's pause for a moment there. I'm curious about uh, King Shaka Airport in KwaZulu-Natal as well as the Cape Town Airport. You say you see inbound traffic increasing or passengers coming in, increasing at these two airports. And we take for granted that the main port of entry, almost ex- the only port of entry into South Africa from elsewhere is Joburg. So where are these flights coming from? Um, so we have flights coming from, from all over, f- coming from the Middle East uh, into King Shaka, uh, coming from Europe, uh, and the Middle East into um, into Cape Town and also recently from uh, West Africa as well. However, this was through a sustained and deliberate effort to attract new traffic and develop new routes into mm. those airports as well because they are also international airports. Uh, they are also regarded as our flagship airports. And also for us to be able to sustain ourselves as a, as a company or as a port authority, we had to make sure that we diversify our traffic footprint and not only rely on OR Tambo International Airport as the main gateway into the country and into the continent. Well, airport's business is a very diversified business, right? I can imagine somebody saying, okay, you run nine airports. It's a monopoly business, so there's no competition. That's one. Number two, the only thing we think about is uh, the lending fees that you charge, the planes that land and take off from these and parking fees and nothing else. But it's a very diversified business, isn't it? No, it is. Um, In fact, we have two revenue streams. So the one that you uh, referred to now is only one part 
of our revenue stream. The second, the, so it's divided into two, which is our aeronautical revenue, which is the regulated part of our business, um, which is composed of tariffs. And then we have what we refer to as non-aeronautical revenue, which talks to either diversified interests that bring in revenue into the business. So apart from tariffs, we have uh, retail interests. Mm-hmm. So the the mall setup that you see at the airports. Uh, and then we also have property uh, uh, investments and we, we so we are a, a, a broader landlord than just um, a, a, an airport space for lending and parking aircraft. So what were your revenues like again this year? Uh, this year we saw our revenue go up to uh, 8 billion. Uh, there was an increase of 3.3% from the previous year. Um, and 64% of that was made up of the aeronautical revenue. And our aeronautical revenue is made up of our, our passenger service fee and our aircraft landing fees and parking fees. Now, you also reduce the, the tariffs that you charge, isn't it, um, on the tickets? I remember there was controversy some time back that you make tickets very expensive and you've got to reduce the cost thereof. Yes, uh, our regulating con- in economic regulation committee uh, has made a determination on tariffs. Now, something I need to make your listeners aware of is that uh, our tariffs uh, are only uh, just over 80 rands on the ticket price. So what you'll find uh, with most airlines is that they will lump a whole lot of costs together and they will refer to those as airport taxes yes. and they will attribute them to airport com- well most passengers then attribute that to airport company South Africa yes. and that is not necessarily so only a portion of that comes to us and currently with the reduction that we saw with the new tariff determination they cost about 83 rands so f- every time you buy a ticket 83 rands of that comes to us from the passenger now, for many of us, it's, different, it's difficult to differentiate yourselves from the actual airline business. What's your relationship like with uh, SAA? What's the difference between yourselves and SAA? The difference between ourselves and the airlines is that we have a, a client relationship. The airlines are our clients. We provide them with infrastructure uh, where at they land their aircraft and they're able to load, offload passengers and cargo. Uh, so and 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 they make use of our infrastructure, obviously at a fee. Now the number of uh, th- I'm asking the question because you are responsible for certain things that have got to do with flying, right? For instance, the baggage handling is that your responsibility? Um, the baggage handling is uh, the yes, it is uh, the re- our responsibility. However, currently it is outsourced to partners uh, that uh, the the. Act airlines make use of oh it's not yourselves it's not no no no. we have outsourced it to third parties okay but by yourselves or by the airlines by ourselves okay i'm asking that because there was a time of uh of of, of baggage going missing and security concerns and a whole number of things that were going on with the theft and so on have those things improved they have improved quite a lot even though we haven't reached a hundred percent uh a non non pilferage rate uh, but we are well into the 70s uh, into the 90s excuse me into the 90s so we've seen quite an improvement over the number of years and it's something we work tires- tirelessly towards to improve i know that you know one bag pilfered is one bag too many mm. uh, and for us it remains a concern but we have really invested heavily uh, into a baggage system and into security systems that make sure that security is tightened around passenger luggage and the safety and our security around the airport, I mean, there have been many incidents of people being followed home and robbed and so forth, which uh, creates the impression that there's not adequate security around the airport. With airports being national key points, there's an expectation that they should be 100% secure. However, the difference with airports is that um, the certain sections of the airport which are freely accessible to the public and you cannot stop people from coming and going yes. as they please, mm. like your malls. Yes. Um, and, 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 and that gives us a challenge in terms of implementing certain measures, meaning implementing even higher restrictions in terms of who comes in and, and goes out. However, um, we have put together a, a task team 
uh, with our stakeholders, especially at OR Tambo, which saw a high incidence of those kind of crimes that you're referring to. The task team is made up of the security cluster and they are working together to make sure that uh, those kinds of crimes are addressed and they are combated. Um, as you may have picked up in the media over the last week, there's some breakthroughs that were made, uh, especially after the, the follow-home follow robbery of um, an international delegation uh, of conference goers mm. uh, f- uh, from Iran, I, I, I think it was. Uh, a breakthrough was made uh, and a syndicate was cracked. Uh, and there was a joint operation between ourselves, the SAPS, and, and other uh, law enforcement agencies. Now, let's go back to the business. As much as you have uh, uh, realized, what, 10.8% profit this year, is it? Uh, 8 billion, yeah. A 3.3% 3. 3. increase. 3.3%, but in, in money terms, it's uh, how much? It's 8 billion. 8 billion revenues? R- yes. And revenue. then profits? 2 billion. 2 billion. Well, which is a good return on the, invest- on the investment. But transformation is also one of your key goals, right, in terms of who you source from and how much money you spend, as well as uh, transformation of human resources within the organization. How are you doing on that indicator? So we've identified uh, there's an ongoing uh, effort to 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 uh, make inroads and significantly improve our transforma- uh, transformation within the business. We have identified certain sectors um, within our business uh, or which are some of the biggest revenue contributors in our business, and we we have transformation imperatives linked to those. Mm. Uh, those are advertising. It's uh, IT, it's retail, and it's uh, car hire, car rental. And have we seen any difference there? I mean, most of your clients who occupy space there, especially in the retail area, are the established businesses. So we haven't seen new entrants uh, come and participate there. So what we have done is we have revised our policy when it comes to retail space, and we have come up with a two-shop rule. Uh, meaning that one uh, retailer cannot own more than two shops across our network. Mm. And also, because we work on a tender system for the retail space, we have to see through contracts that are existing before new retailers can come on board. Uh, So we will be going going out on tender for retail space uh, for five of our out of our nine airports very soon. Okay. And, 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 and those that new policy will kick in then to make sure that we're able to attract new players into the space. And, and what is the life of these contracts for retailers? Uh, for retailers, uh, for a normal retail shop, it is five. So they range between five and seven years. So for a normal retail, it's five years. But for your food and beverage type of retailers, it goes up to seven years because of the capital injection mm. that they need to invest mm. on the property. So we give them a bit of a longer a longer contract. You, you not only operate airports in South Africa. The last time I heard you were going elsewhere. You were being invited to operate airports elsewhere. How is that going? So currently we have a presence in uh, Guarulhos International Airport in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, We have an equity stake in Mumbai, uh, in India. And we also do some consulting work uh, for Ghana airports. And the money coming from those partnerships, is that included in the revenues or not really? Not really. Okay, so so you report those numbers differently or you allow those particular airports and companies to report on their side? To report on their side, yeah. And uh, any expansion plans? Uh, In terms of our footprint. Your footprint moving elsewhere, you know, I'm I'm not sure about the pipeline of the airports that you are going to be participating in or establishing. Okay, so uh, last year we implemented our new strategy, uh, Vision 2025, Mm -hmm. um, where in one of the pillars is to grow our footprint. And the reason for that is we want to start operating or playing outside of the borders of South Africa so that we can sustain ourselves for the for for the longer term. Um, And given that we have proved that we can we can run world class operations here at home. Uh, we feel that we are up to the task of taking that expertise outside of the country. So we are, targeti- we are targeting mostly your emerging markets, uh, meaning uh, the continent and um, uh, 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 more your uh, anglophone uh, African countries. Now, there is an airport that I'm not sure if you're responsible for it and you, or you had to take it over. That's Mtata Airport. Are, are you responsible for it now? 
Uh, not entirely. We are in the process of um, uh, going in as, as managing partners. What's the situation there? Because it's one of those airports that could not be renovated on time for 2010, I remember. It has been completely renovated now uh, and the new terminal is operational and we are in uh, discussions with the government of the Eastern Cape because they own the airport to come in as managing partners on their behalf. You know, I read a story recently which I have to tell you and we'll end the interview right here. The airport is called the most useless airport in the world. You, you ever heard of it? No, I haven't. The St. Helena Airport. They spend a lot of money on it. I think about 4 billion rands or thereabouts. And no plane had landed on it for several years. The first time a plane landed was last week or over the weekend. Now the Daily Telegraph in the UK referred to it as the most useless. <laughs> that's the headline of the story. And that's the kind of reputation you wouldn't want to have. You'll think there's something wrong with it. The infra infrastructure of the airport is great. It's just that the population of St. Helena is very small. So there was no airline willing to fly there and back. So there it was. They'd spend, a, they'd spend um, about 300 million, million pounds on it, and no one was using it. So the headline read, the most useless airport in the world. What's the most useless airport in South Africa, you know? <laughs> we Within our network, there yeah. isn't any. Yeah. Um, in fact, at the same uh, Airports Council International Conference uh, that just took place in Mauritius, mm. uh, our airports received accolades uh, in terms of international awards uh, for being best within their categories. Which airports? Um, it was King Shaka International Airport, yeah. Cape Town International Airport, Bram Fischer Airport in Bloemfontein. Yeah. And believe it or not, Eppington for six years in a row now. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, it is the best airport within its size and category. But what's the busiest airport in South Africa and the least busy airport? The busiest airport is uh, O'Artambo Artambo International. Yeah. And uh, the least busiest is Eppington. Okay. But yes. anyway, it's winning awards. We don't know what for, but maybe it looks good. It's nice. And, uh, and it is well managed. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. Um, and, and just to your point in terms, I doubt that within the AXA network, we will have uh, a useless airport anytime <laughs> no, soon. No, I just found, because, I found the headline interesting. That yeah, the, because the, even though... How mean can people be? Yeah, even yeah. though, you know, we do put up the infrastructure and King Shark is a is a case in point where yeah. we put up the infrastructure and at the time people said no it would be a white elephant yes. but we took we made an effort to attract airlines yes. to develop routes into Durban uh, so that we could make you, you uh, utilize that infrastructure so there are direct international flights flying there, there are now. direct yes there are um, Emirates is one of them Ethiopian is one of them Turkish is one of them mm. and many others Rifen Sashinas, thanks very much for talking to us on the program. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Tim. Sure.